Hello again. Here's a lesson on how to simplify radical expressions, otherwise known as surds. Check it out. Radical expressions. What is a radical? A radical is any expression with this symbol in it, okay? The square root um, symbol or the radical symbol. Technically, it's called a radical symbol, but when I start going through my examples, I just say root. It's just easier to say. So let's do the first one, root 9. How do we do that? That's just the square root of 9, the positive square root of 9. What is it? It is 3. Easy. Okay. Now we're going to see what happens when we get... This is not a perfect square, is it? Uh, what's root 27? Uh, well, you can just go to your calculator and do that, and you can get a decimal. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to try and simplify it. We're not going to evaluate it. We just want to simplify it. And I'll tell you, the answer is going to look like this. Something radical something. Okay, that's what the answer is going to look like. And you notice there's not going to be any decimals in here. It's just a simplified radical, as we say. So how do we do it? This is what we do. We do 27. We're going to do a factor tree. Let's do a factor tree for 27. 27 is 9 times 3, and 9 is 3, 3. And what I like to do is, um, even though I've already I've stopped here, I found my prime number, I always like to copy them down because I find I might forget something. Okay, so I've got all my, what are these numbers called at the bottom of a factor tree? Prime numbers, okay, that's our prime factorization. So 23 is 3 times 3 times 3. Now what we do, check this out. We're doing square rooting. What we want to do is um, get the prime numbers into teams of two. Can I make a pair of threes? Yes, I make a pair of threes here. And once they make a pair of three, this is kind of like a nine. The nine inside gets square rooted and becomes a three outside. So any number that you can pair up, you just write outside and you only write one of them. Whatever's left over stays inside. Okay, so this is three root three. That is our answer. And that means three times root three. And if you want to check that that's right or not, that's the same number. It just looks different. You can go to your calculator, which I'll do right now. See it in the corner there. If I do root 27, I get 5.196 blah, 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 blah. And now I'm going to do the same calculation again. I'm going to do what is three times root three and push equals, and you'll also get 5.196 blah 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 blah, it's the same number. So what we're doing is simplifying, and we call this exact value. I may have mentioned this before, I'm not sure, but if you have radicals in your answer, that's called exact value. If I was going to do a decimal, and then I cut the decimal off somewhere, that becomes an approximation. Okay, so similar, if you're finding the area of a triangle, sorry, the area of a circle, say, let's say you've got a radius of 2. What's the area of a circle? Area of a circle is pi r squared, which is pi times 2 squared, which is, you can write that as 4 times pi. And then you go to your calculator, right, and you go, what's 4 times pi? And you get a decimal, and you cut it off. That is actually an approximation. If we left the pi there, and this is what we start doing in math, we leave things in something called exact form. So if you leave a pi in there or you leave a radical in there without the decimal, that's the most precise way that you can write it. Okay, so that's called exact form. And this is what we start doing from now on. Let's do another one. Radical 48. So again, is that a perfect square? No, so it's not going to be like this one. The answer is going to look like something radical something. Radical something. Remember, this is always some th three times root three. This is something times root something. Let's do our factor tree for 48. 48. Uh, you could do a factor tree in many different ways, but you should always end up with the same prime numbers at the bottom. 4 12s are 48. 4 is 2, 2. 12 is, I might cheat here, 12 is 4 times 3. No, I won't cheat. I'll do it all. I'll write it all out properly. 2, 2. 4 is 2, 2. 3. There we go. Now let's make some pairs. I've got a pair of twos. Yes, so I'm going to write a two at the front. Any more pairs? Yes, I've got another pair of twos. So another two comes at the front. And what's left over? There's a three left over. So the three is inside, like so. 
There's the answer. 22 root 3? No, don't be silly. It is 2 times 2 times root 3, which is 4 root 3. That is our simplified exact value of root 48. Getting the hang of it? Uh, let's just do one more larger one. Root 135. Pause me and work ahead if you like. Um, 1, 3, 5. Factor tree there. 1, 3, 5. Ooh, I know that's divisible by 5. So what's 5 into 1, 3, 5? Five? 5 into 13. So 5 into 1 doesn't go. 5 into 13 goes twice. Remainder 3. 5 into 35. 7 fives are 35. Okay, so that is... 27 times 5. Keep going with your factor tree. And what I might do is leave this as our answer for the comments. When this simplifies, what is the answer? What radical what? Put your answer in the comments to the post, okay? Down below. Now what happens when algebra starts coming in? We've got a variable here. We've got an x to the power of 5. The same thing is going to happen you still do a factor tree. And it looks a bit silly, but we just do the factor tree for that, x to the 5. Uh, you'll start doing this, you'll, you won't need a factor tree every time once you start getting used to it. This can be written as 25 times x to the 5, right? And then we just continue the factor tree. Factors of 25, 5, 5. What are the factors of x to the 5? Well, this is x times x times x times x times x. Same thing, and then we make our pairs. Oh, we've got a pair of fives. Cool. So the five comes out there. Pair of x's. Cool. X goes there. Any more x's? Yes, we've got another pair of x's. Another x goes there. Anything left over? Yes, we've got a one x left over. Okay, so our answer is going to be five times x times x times root x. And our final answer, how can we write that nicely? 5x squared root x is our answer for that one. Getting the hang of it? And our last one, f, I'm just running out of board space. Don't erase your working. I'm erasing my working because I need the board space. 24x squared y, can you do this without the factor tree? Hmm. Let's think about 24. Uh, 24 is a bit hard. So 24 is, I might do a factor tree for 24. 12 times 2, 6 2 is a 12, uh, 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. Can we make any pairs here? Pair of 2s, yes, so a 2 comes outside. Uh, any more pairs? No, so the 3 and the 2 are going to stay inside. What else? X. Uh, can we get a pair of Xs if we did a factor tree for all this stuff? No, there's no pairs of x's, so the x is going to stay in there. And what about the y? We've got a, if we did the factor tree, we'd have a y and a y, right? We've got y squared. Or in other words, this is kind of like 9, and that square roots to 3, and it comes outside. So we've got a pair of y, so that means that one y is going to come out the front. Okay, and what's the final answer here? This means 2 times y times Remember this is a 3 times 2, 3 times 2 times x left over. So this simplifies to 2y root 6x. Can you do that? Alright, so that is simplifying radicals. Let's try a couple more. Continuing example 1, we've got g and h. What is root 7 times root 7? What does that simplify to? Well, we've got another rule now, and I think we did it with our exponential rules, remember? We had, uh, if I have um, a to the power of m times b to the power of m, that can be written as a times b to the power of m. Remember, I think we did it back that other way. It's kind of like a distributive property, isn't it? Like m goes to a and b, so we get uh, a to the power of m times b to the power of m. Well, sometimes we say the... Uh, Power of the products equals the product of the powers. That's a fancy way to say it. The same thing actually happens when you have radicals, because we'll get to it one day, but ex exponentials and radicals are actually the same thing. So if I've got root A times root B, what I can do is just do the root of the whole thing. Okay, so this is an important little formula for today. 
All right? If you ever multiply two radicals together, you can just make one big radical and put them all inside. So what can we do here? What we can do is make it into 7 times 7, which is a few ways you can think about this. This is just root 49. And what's root 49? That is 7, of course. Okay, or another thing you can, another way you can think about it, radical something times itself, the radical just disappears. So you can think, oh, if I've got root x times root x, then it just becomes x. It's kind of another way you can think about it. Okay, and this only works when x is positive, by the way. We can't square root negatives. And same thing here, getting a little trickier. This 3 here makes it a bit weird. What I might do is just use a different color here. 3 times root b, and I don't like this big fat dot. The big fat dot means times, of course. The big fat dot turns up in the textbook, so I'm going to put it in my examples. How could I use this rule here? Well, I'm just going to combine these two. Okay, the 3 is just going to hang out the front there. I'll just leave that little 3 hanging. And we're going to make one big square root symbol and put all this together underneath. Can we do this in one step? What's b times 2b cubed? That's going to combine to become 2b to the power of 4. Now, can this be simplified? Yes, it can. So I'm going to do the factor tree, but I'm only going to do it for 2b to the 4. Only for the stuff that's inside the radical symbol. 2b4, 2, and we've got 4b's. b, 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 b. Let's make our pairs. And remember, the 3 just hangs out the front there. Two more steps should be enough. Three times. Okay, and now let's figure out how this simplifies. Square root symbol. We're going to have some stuff outside, some stuff inside. We've got a pair of B's. Okay, so the pair of B's come out the front and become one B. And we've got another pair of B's. So we get another B at the front. Anything left over? Just the two left inside. So this just becomes 3 times b times b times root 2, which simplifies to 3b squared radical 2 or root 2, whichever way you like to say it. How are we going with this? Got the hang of it? Perform the operation. So we're just going to add some radicals here or subtract. How are we going to do this? Well, we, this is kind of algebraic. We only collect the like terms. So what have we got here? We've got root 14, root 21, root 14. This is kind of like, just bear with me, does this remind you of something in algebra? 7x plus y minus 4x. Does that kind of look familiar? Because you've got root 14 appearing here and here. So they're kind of like like terms. And we've got root 21 here, which is unlike uh, root 14. If this was the question, what would we do? What would we collect together? We'd collect these two. Okay, so we don't really need that. We collect these two together. We've got 7 root 14 minus 4 root 14, or 7x minus 4x. What would that be? 7 apples minus 4 apples is 3 apples. And here we've got a banana, and they can't, um, they're unlike terms, so we just leave that separately like that, okay? And that is the answer for the first one. That is as simple as that can be written. And what's that form called when we leave the radicals in there? That, of course, is called exact form. And let's try this last little one over here. The first step is going to be 3 root 7. 7 is a nice prime number. Radical 28 or root 28, 28, that can be simplified. Why don't you pause me and go ahead and try and do it for me. And you'll find something else can be done after that. We can do another step. Got it? Here I go. 28. 7 fours are 28. 7, 2, 2. Okay, can we make a pair of prime numbers? Yes, we've got a pair of twos. So we get a two at the front. Anything left over? Seven. Seven at the front. Okay, so what does this become? Can these be added and combined now? Yes, these are like terms. It's like 3x plus 2x, or 3 apples plus 2 apples, which is 5 apples. And again, you can get your calculator if you like. Do that, get the decimal for it, and write it down somewhere, and then do this. 5 times radical 7. Remember there's a times there. Are they the same decimal? 
Okay, and you can check that that answer is correct, correct and that these are in fact the same.